real estate's days are definitely behind it. You, you, you just wonder, when is this going to end? It's, it's a classic credit bubble, right? We have the Kuznets cycle uh, peaking here, and it's definitely going to peak in 2024, but rising interest rates just to assure that the monetary wave, in conjurative terms, just the falling price of credit that gives rise to Ponzi finance and causes asset bubbles. So now it's just reversing. You know, as Ray Dalio says quite often, which I like, is that, uh, you know, something is happening in our lifetimes um, that has happened in the past, and we're just going to experience uh, economic winter uh, because of an asset bubble uh, collapsing. And in this case, for Canada, it's it's real estate and it's massive bubble. You can see real estate here during the whole monetary wave where it had these, uh, you know, secular rises over the past 40 years. And the beneficiary from that really was the falling price of credit. Now that is over, and we can see that there's been a, uh, a collapse in prices. Now, what's interesting is that the the slowdown. People would say, "Well, you know, it hasn't done much," but you got to remember, 2009 and 1991 uh, and 81. Uh, we had a recession. We still don't have a recession. And when we get the recession, we're going to see the worst uh, downturn in Canada's history when it comes to real estate. I showed this. Uh, this is also updated in the Canada Money Supply, and it's just shown that you know, in a, on in it, sorry, in a credit based economy, if you're not growing credit, uh, you're not going to grow the economy. And when I say credit based, this is not bank credit uh, um, made in, in terms of that most of the loans out there are between two parties. One was interested in borrowing and leveraging. The other one was interested in lending. That's where most of the money supplies come from. Central banks can't stop the reversal. I think this is what a lot of people in the hyperinflation camp misses, that in a credit contraction as asset prices fall, the consumer and the lender step back, and that causes a vicious cycle and economic winter. Right. You know, they can print all they want. If nobody's interested in borrowing, nobody's interested in lending, you just get a vicious cycle. And there's only one way to prevent it. Don't allow a credit bubble to get out of hand, but it's too late. It's, you know, we have a massive credit bubble that's larger than Japan's and larger than <clears throat> the U.S. in the 20s. And that consumer loan is going to uh, unwind because it's mostly unproductive debt. There's very little debt. Now, why I'm even more convinced, I mean, this just gets worse, right? This is the numbers today. I mean, 4.3% on the five-year where most of the mortgages are. You have to go back to 2007 to see. And this is a new um, post-rise in interest rates high. You know, you know, pretty much the 2010s, and it was just of record low interest rates, and no wonder real estate did well because the incomes aren't there, right? I mean, real estate needs multiple variables, and the most important is always income. Do you have the income to support it? Support uh, mortgages, and mortgages can be facilitated by more and more from the future with long amortizations. And a 25 year plus <clears throat> or anything beyond 10 years is pretty long. And 25 years is the norm, but people need to realize that that wasn't the norm prior to the 1930s. So we've borrowed from the future and we did that with record low interest rates, which is over. And hence, we're starting to see the reversal in real estate prices. So, what's the conclusion and what's obvious is what's coming, right? And people don't want to talk about a housing market uh, crash. We had a 25% correction. And that 25% uh, correction that we had was pretty severe in the city that I grew up. I want to make something that's uh, really important. Um, to, to, the, the other day, I had to bring my mother. She still shops at uh, uh, in the area where we grew up in in our first home. And um, what uh, was interesting is the 
home. There was a home for sale on the, my former street. So I was curious how much it costs, and I was shocked that it just sold for $975,000. I mean, this is a semi-detached home in northwest Toronto. And my parents, I uh, recall, they told me many times they paid 15000 in 1964. That was just, you know, factory workers. Today, I really don't know how anybody uh, can afford that today, unless they've gone into a lot of leverage, which is interesting. So it just tells you that, you know, the bubble is still alive and well in this city. It's, there's a lot of leverage. A lot of people are buying homes they can't afford. And um, the prices have a long way to fall. Where's the fair level on real estate prices in uh, Toronto? Oh, 50 to 75% lower. I know. That, that can't happen. It won't happen. They won't let it happen. I hear that all the time. And, and these people are just uh, ignorant of history. And it will happen because the consumer will retrench as prices turn back. Now, remember, we have already had a, what, 19% correction, and we don't have a recession yet. In 2009, we did. In the early 1990s, we did. In the early 1980s, we had a recession. So the numbers are only going to be worse once the economy turns down into economic winter 2024. And it's really important to remember that. So I, it, it's, it's uh, you know, the point is I've said many times, look, if you haven't deleveraged yet, the leverage means getting rid of as much unproductive debt as possible. You're not a company, right? If you own a business and you're expanding your business, that's different. But even that you should be careful of, right? You know, to Toyota's secret surviving the 1990 depression in uh, Japan, as uh, they called it, cash flow management. It was just cash flow, watching their cash flow and their debt and keep it to a minimum and uh, surviving. And they've done well. Where the Nikkei hasn't recovered, but Toyota, I think, recently still a new high. Point being is this is the most important chart. Really, this thing here is, take a look at that, the new high. We haven't seen that. Now, I put that as a real estate collapse at 4.75% because that's where the the interest rates peaked in 2007. And that's why real estate was strong even into 2008 in the summer until the economy finally rolled over. And we had this small, short nine-month recession. So one can only imagine the recession that's coming is going to be pretty severe because we don't have an interest rate cushion. Now, I understand what you're thinking. Interest rates will fall to zero. What if they don't? What if the sovereign debt crisis emerges? What if a default risk uh, emerges? And that doesn't help the people who leveraged. I said this before. I went through the 1990s personally. What saved me from bankruptcy was interest rates fell below the level I borrowed. And it was more manageable. If you borrow at zero, it has to, well, near zero. I mean, if you borrow at that level, it's still the same strain on your finances. Because during that time, things were bad in the economy and uh, businesses were kind of slow. So income growth was non existent, actually, was negative. And what helped with cash flow was uh, falling interest rates. So the debt you took on was much cheaper. Hopefully, that makes sense. Anyways, it's not great for the future, and it's only going to get worse, and it's going to be really important to keep ahead of this. And I'll be uh, chronologically going through all this in a way that, 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 that can help you. Uh, now that I've got this whole thing worked out, and people seem to love the videos, I can articulate the message better, and I can also uh, show charts and data uh, that confirms. Now, there's a lot of other indicators that haven't turned yet. I'm looking for those. Those will be turning, especially with the five-year hit a new high, interest rates hit a new high. Um, that is significant. And I can only imagine, and if you're in that situation, I can relate. I've been there. So um, most people don't know how hard it is to um, Pull in the reins of your spending power where more has to go on interest rate cost to just live in the home. The lesson is that we never should have financialized the Canadian economy. We did. 
now we're going to have to fix that on the other side of this mess. And uh, when economic winter, I'm pretty sure, arrives next year, it lasts anywhere from 16, 18 to 21 years. It's a generation. And it's going to be very volatile, a uh, massive amount of creative destruction, massive amount, and everything from politics right down to the economy. Anyways, that's definitely in the future. And as always, we will talk soon.